everybody, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. By special request, I've had several uh, folks on my uh, video blog comment that they wanted to see some of the details on exterior rigid foam. I'm here in a project uh, that I'm doing with Dick Clark Architecture and um, we are building a new construction house behind me. Fairly modern design, it's about a 2,000 square foot house. Um, we're framing this with 2x6 advanced framing. Look for my other videos on the framing on this house. But we're wrapping the entire outside of the house with rigid foam. And here's the foam that we're using. This is uh, R Armax. Uh, it is a, a 3 quarter inch sheet. And at 3 quarters of an inch thick, this is R5. So this has a very high R value. It also comes with this real reflective face on it, which we like because we're going to be installing the siding on top of this. In a, rain screen, in a rain screen fashion, so there'll be an air gap in front of this, so we'll have a little bit of a radiant uh, barrier on the outside of the house as well. Let me show you how we install it. Okay, so uh, windows are set. The Tyvek is on the house. I think I showed you before, we're using uh, Tyvek drain wrap, and this window has been set with my, uh, with my standard method where we're using um, uh, DuPont straight flash on the sides. We're making a, a sill for these windows uh, with DuPont flex wrap. We've sloped the sill on the inside. Basically, the house is 100% weatherproof at this point. So now it's time to install the three-quarter foam that I talked about, that R-Max. But here's the problem that you run up against, and this is true with all kinds of different manufacturers. We've got a mixture of RAM windows on this project and some Anderson 100s. And if you look at the flange right here, once I put that three-quarter foam on there, up against the, uh, um, the Tyvek, that DuPont drain wrap, we're basically flush with the window. So here's how we've solved that. Uh, we worked with the architect to come up with this detail. Um, we've actually already put this bottom piece on here, but we've, we've come up with a flashing detail, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you a detailed photo of this on the video. But basically what we're doing is we're putting this flashing on so that we can thicken the depth of the window. And now I have something um, to put my siding, or in this case, in this section of the house, we're actually doing EFAS here, to butt up against, and now we've got the added depth. This flashing piece that's on here is not necessarily meant to be waterproofing. So the details on this, in, in some respects, are easier because we're not really trying to make this 100% waterproof. If water gets behind there, no problem. We've got the DuPont Tyvek system, uh, drain wrap rather, that's, that's gonna leave just a little bit of gap for this foam and we'll let water out. We did a video on that not too long ago to show how well it lets the water out. Um, so now let's go up and we'll show you what the uh, uh, what the finished install looks like with our rain screen system and our uh, our hardy plank. Okay, so now we are finished with our install and here's what it looks like. Um, this is that side piece I just showed you on that window downstairs. This is now an Anderson 100 window in this area. And I'll uh, lace in a photo of how we, uh, we put these two pieces together with a piece of caulking just to keep it all looking nice. Um, but this uh, hardy plank is on a rain screen system on top of that foam. So our exterior foam is continuous on this outside. We used a, uh, a rain screen behind that. And now we're basically hollow behind here. The beauty of this now is even though our siding is proud of the window, um, that, that uh, flashing that we made uh, really gives us um, the, uh, the ability to come up to that and not see it. If you zoom over here, we can, we can show you. We did an outside corner piece as well. This is an X-brace. And if you kind of sight down the wall, you can see how the, um, you can kind of see how that, uh, that flashing piece sticks proud of the hardy plank by about three quarters of an inch, something like that. Last thing I wanted to point out too is once I do this system where all my weatherization is behind there, this cladding is really only acting as my UV protector and a little bit of bulk water shedding. Other than that, I could care less if some water gets back there because we're 100% waterproof and we want that water to come out. So caulking is really unnecessary. You can see we did not caulk this gap between our flashing and the hardy plank. And that's true around our windows, all those areas. The caulking is purely aesthetic. And we figure, hey, if it's just aesthetic, why cock it? Because it's going to crack someday. So why uh, cause a maintenance hassle for our clients to have to re-cock it? So that way, if we want to repaint this in a couple years, there's no caulking that needs done. Any water that gets in there is going to be able to run right back out. All their weatherization is behind there and correct. Much, much better than a face-sealed system where you're really trying to diligently caulk and re-caulk. 
uh, every year, year after year for your weatherization. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Please think about using exterior foam. If you're in our hot, humid Texas climate, this three quarter inch detail we did here is really a great place to go. One inch, uh, even better. If you're in northern climates, you may need to think about some thicker foam because there's some dew point issues uh, that you're gonna have to deal with. But if you're in Texas, three quarter ridge of foam on the outside of your house makes a, a total blanket or a total sweater for your house. Gets rid of that thermal bridging. And that R5 we've got in this house is gonna make a big difference in our energy bills in this house. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah.